Hello. Hi. Welcome to part two of building this, the burrow. We actually did the first part in a live, but our internet is being really, really silly right now. So we are actually going to do book two, which is actually the middle section because we've already done book one and three. And he is going to work on... But what are we snacking on today? Well, first off, to drink, we have some Zevia. You've got ginger ale, and I've got grape drink. Yum. We have these stuffing-flavored popcorn from uh, Good & Gather. Right, we, we did the chips during the live, so now yeah. we're doing the popcorn. So go ahead and talk about what your snack is, and uh, let's... Maybe scissors? <laughs> so I will say that at the time of filming, Maggie Smith did pass away this week. And by the time you've seen this, it'll be a week already. So this is kind of like a bittersweet build, I think. Yeah. For me, even though she's not in this build. All big three are now gone. It's sad. Yeah, it is sad. And as far as I know, are they are they planning a wand ceremony? <laughs> they did it the day she died. How they decided to put these two sets together. Because when you pre-ordered the burrow... You got Borgen and Burks for free alongside it. And I thought that was a really fitting combination since, like, right there in the second movie, you had him using the flu network and going to Borgen and Burks and going into Diagon Alley. Mm -hmm. So there is kind of a connection because both of them feature the flu network build in them. Yeah, that is kind of cool. Well, we both have mini fakes, it looks like. Yep, and I've got Lucius. This is Charlie, who shows up a lot more in book four. Yeah, um, because he is the one who does the dragons in Romania. Also, aka looks like could be Frodo. Could be. Like, they probably used a lot of the same parts. I've been hearing a lot on TikTok about how they have discovered that pineapple skins are fireproof. Oh my gosh. This could be effective dragon armor. You just fight a dragon by wearing a bunch of pineapple skins. <laughs> they put a hot iron ball on, and it had almost no effect. Used a flamethrower on it. It was nuts. So, you know, maybe that's something that the Wizarding World needs. It just needs more pineapples. I don't know what this is actually supposed to be, but it's a little box with a really nice-looking top, and inside is a green and a black coin or stud of some form what was it that lucius took to borgen and burks um i don't know what he was selling there i'm already having issues with this build basically we're putting on like some stair like things on the side of this and it doesn't want to stick it does not want to go right there we go ah we're good there we go so yeah, right now we're doing the, the roof part right here. When I worked at Diagon Alley, our, we all loved working in Nocturne. When we did wand magic, we would all be just like, oh my gosh, Nocturne Alley. Not just because it was the only place that was actually air conditioned and we were wearing flannel, but because it was nice and dark and dim and you got to act spooky around all the kids. Especially because nobody can see in there. Nobody can. And so, like, if you stayed standing completely stock still, nobody knew that you were actually a person until you start moving. And then they're like, oh, my gosh. My biggest pet peeve is that people don't let their eyes adjust. Yeah. When they go into Nocturne, they immediately think they need to turn on their phone light in order to see where they're going. But the reality is, and here's a little Nocturne tip, if you really want to be in part of the ambiance and not tick off people around you, then you just should walk into Nocturne, stop, and let your eyes adjust to the darkness. Believe me, it is so much more magical. And you miss so many little details that are in there by trying to just illuminate the area. It's dark for a reason, folks. And it looks like what I'm building is the case from Borgen and Burks. Oh, and it gets a... Gets, oh, it gets a spider web. Okay, this this is kind of fun. You get to see this little bust in here. So it, they take one little architectural piece, a head and some hair, all in the same tone of gray, and it just makes a nice little bust figure that you can put on the plate on an angle. And it's just, it's a nice look. 
Then we've got a skull in a jar. Our finished display case. So you've got two skulls inside the case. You've got a bust. You've got a skull in a jar. You've got a gem. There's just all, all so many things about there. But also, you can see that it's supposed to plug in to something. You've got the little uh, plug port. So you can plug this into, I think, what's going to end up being the, uh, the flu network that we're going to see in just a moment. All right, now we have gotten a good chunk done of this part of the roof. We're starting on the other side. Ha, ah, you thought you could escape from me. Ha, ah, you tried. You tried. You did that last time too, did you not? Yeah, like they kept on they kept on getting stuck inside the uh, the bag and not coming out. You got to check it twice. Yeah, that's why I was like, "Huh, one's missing. Let me check the bag." See, like the beauty of doing this without doing it live is we don't have to talk. We don't have to be on the entire time. I do like I do like the little so we had started this video already once, but we aren't sure if we lost footage or not. So we are doing it on a different camera. I have done the roofs already. Just starting to work on this up here. What have you done? The chimney and Lucius Malfoy. And the next part that we're going to be building is going to be the back and the top, I think. And just in case we missed it. Popcorn. <sighs> Popcorn foul. <laughs> so while we're doing this, uh, what other sets do we have plans for coming up? Ahsoka Tano's Duel on Paradea, which I'm really looking forward to doing. It's not just, it, it, it's nice because you get all of these different characters in the build, but also you, you get a nice little set piece to be able to display them where they can actually move around. Okay. We, we do have a flower. I can't remember which one it is. We are getting the Ollivander's Madame Malkin set to do as well. Oh, yeah. I, I really hope we can get all of Diagon Alley together. That would just be so much fun to have. Yeah, I think, you know, I don't, obviously I'm not going to get that huge, huge set that they have. And I'm glad we're going to kind of go one by one. Yeah. Um, I don't, I would really like to see like the, what is the name of the stationery shop? Uh, Flourish and Blots. That would be great, but if they could do like an, an entire Borgen and Burks mm -hmm. Nocturne Alley thing would also be... And I, of course, when we start to get into the holiday season, we will have Advent calendars. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to some of the Advent. It does go wonky. That's the one thing that's kind of weird about the set is that there are pieces that aren't exactly straight and they're kind of wonky a little bit. And... Uh, you 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 put them together and you're like, did I did I do this wrong? But no, you didn't because it's just the house is the house is wonky. Yeah. So it looks like now I've moved on to building the mechanism for how this is all supposed to turn. What's really cool is it, it looks like it's exactly how I built this flue as well. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. Which is nice because they only really had to figure out the mechanism once. <laughs> yeah. I just copy paste and give it different surroundings. Okay, that's our mechanism. And it goes right like that. All right, so I have done a little part up here. Again, it's a little bit off kilter, but that is the end of bag nine and we're going into bag 10. I think in this bag, we're gonna do the bathroom, which is very fun because there are some nice bright pieces in this uh, part of it. I think also one thing that this really does highlight in here is the difference between how we build when we are like having to talk to the camera constantly and how we build when we aren't. We can build so much faster when we're not talking to the camera. It's true. You hold us back. So it looks like we're building a mint and like a, I don't know what, <laughs> I can't think of this color, like a light tan. Yeah. I'd call that a coral. Talking is hard for me right yeah. now. Yeah. Obviously, things. grabbing is hard for him. Uh. <laughs> We 
you were right. This was a very fast build. Uh, yeah, I'm not even halfway through. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to be here just chit-chatting with you while we do that. But come on. Let's just take a look at that. You get... Oh, off he goes. And he comes back. It doesn't go all the way up, though, which is kind of sad. So I didn't really see this, but I really like the display cases with all the yeah. scrolls and stuff. That's fun. This is actually kind of addictive. It's almost like a fidget toy. I need to put this down, but I can't. As soon as I'm done with this one, you'll be able to see what I've done. <laughs> <laughs> this is gorgeous. I actually really like this look, but you don't get to see it yet. Oh, and the rubber duck. Oh, there is a no, rubber duck. Yes. Because, of course, Mr. Weasley wants to know what the function is of and, a rubber duck. And that's another thing. And There are hidden rubber ducks. If you go to Diagon Alley, there are hidden rubber ducks, apparently multiple, you just got to find out where they are. I know one of them is in, up, in an upstairs window, so you got to look up and down. Not to mention, there is kind of a thing, I think at Disney and at Universal, where people hide rubber duckies mm -hmm. for people to find. So you've got this, this very ritzy-looking gold sink. You've got a little cabinet right next to it. Oh, that, that roll of toilet paper is just amazing. And I think you see that in other Technic builds. It's kind of like just a flipper or something. So it's really thoughtful. And I've never seen a Lego toilet before. I know that they've existed in well, other we builds. We actually but... have. Well, maybe I have because when I used to go to Legoland, we would always search for in the subway in the New York area. We went to the San Diego Legoland. Mm -hmm. um, there is a guy sitting on the toilet. We would look for him. It's really funny. Uh, yeah. But what's interesting is British toilets don't have their, their tank work the same way. You have a chain that you pull down from above. Like many times you'll see them and the tank is way up high. Mm -hmm. And I think in the in the Wizarding World they have it the same way. Right, where you pull the chain and then you go down in the yeah. in the traveling toilet. Was that like synchronized sipping? Alright, so now we're gonna put the Put this in. So oh, there it is, right on top. Ready for bag eleven? It's Ginny. Ginny. Let's put her in the bathroom. Woohoo! I don't know why I'm woohooing somebody in the bathroom, but whatever. Are Lego ever going to come out with the American sets, like the Makusa? building and how that was all kind of fantastical with a gigantic clock in the middle. Yeah, I mean, I really wish someone with Lego ideas that because that would be pretty cool. Almost looked like the house was built on a tree. Like a gigantic tree was there and they just, they just built the house around it. And that's also part of the reason why it's so janky and twisted is because originally a living thing. Yeah, probably. I don't know if we have any of the stuff. Why don't I just look that up? Let me look up the burrow here, and maybe I have more to talk about. So in the place that the burrow came to stand, once stood a little two-door building, or Tudor building, uh, with a large stone pig pen on the side. It's unknown what happened to the building, but after Arthur and Molly Weasley's marriage, the family settled in the pig pen. So there's the pig pen. Yeah, this so this pig pen that you see here is actually where the family started building the house and just had a little Tudor house, and then they started building up from there. But they did so using a combination of magic and really poor physics. So I think what we're building here before we go back to that is Ginny's bedroom. We have a weird sister's poster. The two Weasley seniors moved into this house in 1970, and that's when they started working on it. Despite them being poor, their house was just like full of love, full of weirdness, as opposed to the house on Privet Drive that was very, very orderly, but had no love in it at all. Not really. Especially not for Harry. And then we have another poster. Woo. This is Gwenog Jones. Another thing that I said my phone was doing was constantly going up to the top for no reason. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was all the way at the bottom. Oh, wow. And it shot me up to the top. Phones have been doing weird things lately. Samsung, what you up to? The whole thing about the um, the burrow burning down was purely from the foot from the movies. Like we don't there was no equivalent scene in the in the books, apparently. Right. But 
the movie version of it left it completely unresolved. So like we we didn't know what happened. We were just like, oh well, they probably fixed it. Oh my gosh, Rupert Grint lived four kilometers away from where they filmed the burrow. Uh, okay, with a tent. <laughs> <laughs> No, it says, in the film adaptation of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, the set of the burrow was built near Gray's Wood on the outskirts of the village Wheatumstead, Hertf- Hertfordshire. Not Hertfordshire, Hertfordshire. Rupert Grint's current house is four kilometers as the crow flies from the set of his character's house. This is the Hollyhead Harpies. That's another Quidditch team. I do find these bedspreads really satisfying. Uh, they just they, they look good. So it took set designers 24 weeks to build a model of the burrow for Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, but it took them six minutes to burn it down. That's so sad. That reminds me of the uh, when we did the Walking Dead podcast for oh, a yeah. while and how we talked about the barn that they burned down. They actually burned it down. Oh. When you see people running away from it, yeah, they're actually running away from that thing. Although... When you're playing it in Harry Potter Lego, years one through four, you can only get two floors of this thing. You really can. It's very sad. Um, I loved those games. However, mm-hmm. I did not like the mechanics of it. It was still mm-hmm. clunky. Like, they they hadn't really figured out the best way to do the mechanisms like they have now. Once they actually understand how they want their mechanics to work, uh-huh. one game starts to look just like the next game looks like the next game. I guess so, yeah. So, like, they they can't truly innovate and do anything different, or it runs the risk of just not working. Right. I mean, I really do appreciate Hogwarts Legacy and what they're trying to do, but we're only really in Hogsmeade and Hogwarts Mm -hmm. there. I mean, I just start playing it, and it's a lot of gameplay, so it's very hard for me to wander out. You've been kind of playing more Dreamlight Valley, but you've you've started to branch more into that game. Right, yeah. And I play more. I play Dreamlight Valley more often just because it's a seasonal thing, right? Yeah. So, like, every two or three months, they come out with, like, another challenge thing. So I'm always trying to keep on it. Mm-hmm. So I have to play Hogwarts Legacy with earphones in, and I can play Dreamlight Valley watching something. So it, it really is, like, a time thing. For me. And, and also, like, it is a little bit better to be playing Hogwarts Legacy on a bigger screen. Mm-hmm. Like, because you have access to one of those Arzopa monitors. That, yeah, that extends out. Yeah, yeah, it's like about that big. So it's definitely better than just a Switch screen. But then you've also figured out how you can connect it to your nice, big, big curved big, monitor curved that I monitor. used to work. I can yeah. see it there. It's, it's bigger than any other monitor in the room. <laughs> yeah. It is very great. So we've gotten about this far in here, and I wanted to show you that we also got this little newspaper on her desk, and this says The Boy Who Lived. Snapshot here, it's almost like she saved the the, the newspaper from the previous movie, yeah, and she's she just got it sitting there on her desk, which is kind of a nice nod to the fact that she's kind of already had a crush on him when she first meets him. This is very interesting, all right? So this... Oh. <laughs> this that I just put up is the cabinet that's going to go into the bathroom. So like uh, I was saying, how does Ginny get into a room when it's right here? You know what I mean? I do have a little bit of curiosity as to what what happened to the burrow at the end of things. Because we we just don't know. And so it says, after, after the war, Arthur and Molly also moved back to the borough following the Battle of Hogwarts. Their home eventually became quite the photo op for wizarding history buffs. The borough became significant once its involvement in the war became public knowledge, which was in the form of a book, the 100 historical sites from the Second Wizarding War. Okay, so we got got her room in here, and it is definitely like just a drop-in holding... Right in this area, very cockeyed. Apparently, because there's so many people coming to the house after the war, just to be like, ooh, look at what... Okay, we're back in there. (laughs) That was a production there. Uh, a bit. <laughs> yeah. So apparently after the war, 
there were so many people coming to the house being like, oh my gosh, let's just look at it. Because it was so important that Ron was like, you know, we should, we should charge people. It was Arthur. He was just like, no, just, just let them come. Let them take photos. It's okay. Whatever. Because you know Arthur. He's just, he's just happy to make people happy. That is true. All right, show it off, and I'm going to get bag 13. And you can really get to see all the level of detail they've got in there with how they've, they've built these stilts just a little bit off from each other to be supports and then just kind of attach to, to hide over there. You see, already it's going to be fun. Yeah. Speed up. It's Birdie Bot's Every Flavor Beans. Smaller than the beans themselves. Spider lamp. But whose room is this going to be? That's the question. Like, that's it, the question. Because we, we know that Ron doesn't like spiders. You know why? Okay, so the, the actual reason why he has arachnophobia is because. J.K. Rowling has arachnophobia. Okay. And so she's like, if I was to meet a boggart, it would also be a spider. And that's that's why. Gotcha. Well, we're going to be building another room right here, and I think this ladder is supposed to be the access to this right up in there. Okay, so uh, now I'm actually looking at what we had put into this, and you can see inside the bathroom, that shelf there has a whole bunch of mugs with everybody's toothbrushes in it, and it's all properly labeled. Fred and George shared one mug. And then Arthur and Molly shared another mug, but everybody else gets their own. And Charlie's is all cracked and banged up. Oh. Yes. A build so tall, we put it almost at the bottom of the screen, and it hits the top of the screen. <laughs> True that. Fourteen. We have Ron, and we've got a poster for the Chudley Cannons, which is his favorite team. Inside of Ron's room, he has a kind of a trophy shelf, and it, it's got three different clocks on it, which I'm not entirely certain why. Maybe it's, maybe he's using it to keep track of the time where his favorite teams are playing. But then he's also got uh, a little man trophy, and he's got uh, a plant and a, a bulb of some sort. Uh, if you know what those are, well, let us know, because it seems like it should be important to him. Actually gets a door. Kind of. Good for him. 
Kind of. Unless it's a closet. It's not. Um, from what I can actually see, this is something that was never actually mentioned in the books, but it was added into the movies. Uh, Ron's room has a, a little balcony. Okay. 15. The fact that it takes two baths to make one room. But that also means we are getting really close to the end because 16 is your final bag. Correct. Okay, so here comes this tiny little balcony. But yeah, we can't give Ginny a door. Right? She had to learn to apparate really early on in life. I didn't think you were allowed to. You weren't. Oh, I can tell there are more windows. Why don't you, uh... Yeah, you just hand me all those window pieces. I thought we were out of stickers. We weren't out of stickers! Now we're out of stickers. All right, and that the back part. One more back. He's stuck in his room too. Yep. <laughs> and all he has to look at is a spider. Now we know why he has arachnophobia. He's right next to the spider room. I have a feeling that this part might start being hidden, so we're going to show you what's inside right now. If you can see closely, you not only have this big old wrench for no known reason, but you also got a chocolate frog box. Yeah, it's that little circle thing in there. I was laying on that game. Here you go. Here's some windows. Okay. So this is the whole thing. There is a nice little area in the top here that you can kind of stick someone in if you want, like a little... A gazebo. There's a little hidden space right here to stick people in, but the way that you connect them up are these little pegs. Okay, so then you can just... It can lock together like that. Now, one of the things that I do note is that when we are building all of these different rooms that seem like one room that's beneath it is going to be completely covered up, the pegs that they're using to hold it all together is very few. So it actually doesn't hold as securely. You just pop it right off if you want yeah, to. Yeah, it's true. Not you that we want to right now. You can open it up like that. I really do like the, that Ron's little balcony. <sighs> We're finally done. Yay! <laughs>